Yeah, two classes. One go through and one go through mark. If you wanted to change this font like bold to make it a light, what would you do? Well, you'd probably search for through bar across the project. But somebody much smarter than myself has decided to make this dry. So essentially he decided dry like this. So he can get in and out the food from food bar. And all of a sudden, food bar is an existing project. Now that's not searchable. Um, so back to our project again. The reason that I've set up a project like this, and it looks really, really awful, but the way that I work in my project is that I use quick find quite a lot. So if you were to look for the same um, the feature single result, which I call this combiner, if you were to look for that in a quick find project, it will look something like this. You search for the feature single H, and all of these files are listed. Now, they might look like a lot, but if you look at the context of these in the folders, it actually makes sense. So the first one is called source based components. Obviously, that's source for the base. Uh, the third one is source themes within a component. Gives you the context. It's both, both, and all this. They're all based on the different themes. And all of a sudden, you kind of understand the context of this file. It doesn't just exist somewhere arbitrarily. You have no idea what it does. Um, and speaking of that, we you know my second smell, smelly selectors. Um, so I want you to imagine again, you're creating a new site, um, and for this site, you want it to be a button. So you create a button, great, awesome, looks beautiful. Now, in the different part of the site, there's a model, and in this model, there's slightly different um, font sizing going on, so you add that to a different file. Not a problem, um, not so complex, quite easy to follow. But uh, all of a sudden, later on the project has something like this. Now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six variations of the same button that all uh, change the original um, button, making it really hard to know what's going on in your project. As Harry points out in his article, is that there's two major problems with this. There's no single source of truth because you're always changing uh, the original object, and there's lots of mutation. Um, so the problem has many potential outcomes via immutable CSS. Um, so he suggests that you can solve this with the um, So essentially what you do is it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, essentially what you do is you extend each class with a new class name. Uh, and it works really well. What you gotta do is have another class, you put that into the uh, markup, and it extends the button to do whatever you want it to do. Now that doesn't work for us, and I'll come back to that in a bit, but um, I'm, I wasn't able to uh, fix and change the markup as I wanted. So we come up with some, some a structure that's looking at something like this. And it's very similar to that whole um, componentized JavaScript uh, thing that everybody's been talking about lately. Um, so you essentially create a, a, a file per component that holds all the files and all the styles related to that component. Um, yeah, so that's it. But nothing leaves outside of the file list unless it's extended for everything. So that brings me to the last one of the night, called Scanning Extends. So I think, I don't really need an introduction for this, but I'd like to just, you guys raise your hands saying, but how many have worked with Extend before? That's cool, it's kind of all you did. And how many have worked with Extend, extend successfully in your project? That actually worked. Nice! Nice. <laughs> well, good stuff. Now, um, just to give you a little bit of an introduction to Extend, Extend is quite simple, but essentially that's what it's uh, what So it extends a um, a couple of styles into another style. So you've got this, you've got an error class, you've got a series error class, you want to extend the styles from error into series error, so you extend it and now put something like this. It looks great, it uh, works well for me, but what I'm realizing is it moves things around your code base and it creates the data that look like this. And this is a real lovely example from my side. <laughs> uh, I know you're asking yourself, why would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> But we're working on the environment, and um, there's always a transition between HTML and these files, and it's really hard to maintain. And whenever there's a change, uh, there's two files to maintain, you can have a fully working front and setup. Um, so I, I want to show you the reason I've done this, and the reason is because we used Bootstrap in the very beginning of the project, it's hard to remove. But I think we're all familiar with boot, uh, Bootstrap since I've been some like this. Um, so you've got roles, you've got containers, you've got calls, and all that sort of stuff that defines um, your entire grid setup. Now that's defined in the markup, and if you have problems with maintaining the markup, that's the problem. So what we wanted to uh, do was to move that out of um, the queue, essentially, and put it into the presentation layer like CSS. Um, so we did that. And uh, this is another example we designed. Maybe not the most glorified example, but there are no bootstrap files in here, it's built on the bootstrap. Now, 
I know you're asking yourself the same thing. Um, how do we maintain this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Do it like this. Now, Excel might not be the most beautiful thing in the world, and everybody is really badly about it, but how awesome is that? If anybody came into this project completely new, having no idea what's going on, and somebody goes, can you make this a little bigger? Can you make this a little bit smaller? Can you change this problem to another problem? I think everybody in here runs seven CMS, whether you're a developer or not, which is really, really neat. Um, so essentially, you know, in my project, you know the, um, the component group class, you essentially know your way around my entire app. And that's kind of what I want to get to. Um, so I want to see you in a couple words. Yes, I am Swedish. Um, but something that I wish really, really hard is um, findability is more important than you realize. I and mean, if you start hiding things around the product and stuff, it's really hard to find a way around it. And maintenance is really, really important. Um, Second one is, I think, I think we all try to, uh, try to write things that are working really quickly and they really look awesome and stuff. But at the end of the day, we all write for humans. And humans need to understand what's going on. So it's really important that you write things that make sense for a human and not for a computer. A computer can set that. And third rule that I have, my most important rule is, we all set our own rules. You can set your own rules, you gotta manage the framework, how you set things up. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the most important thing is that you follow your own rules. If you don't follow your own rules, if you're, all, if you're always deviating from your own rules, how somebody else is going to come in and understand what's going on in the project? Just to recap. Finally, write your humans and follow your own rules. That's it.